pew! Whether it's the release of the LEGO Star Wars original trilogy, or that one time pilots didn't know how to land a plane correctly, 9-11's known for a lot of things. <laughs> I will admit, not one of the smoothest intros to one of my videos, but regardless, it is relevant, because this is Kendrick dropping Drake's 9-11 on 9-11, and I wanted to talk about it in a video. Although, while this is semi a continuation of that coughing baby versus atomic bomb that went down between Drake and Kendrick earlier this year, the beef kind of ended when Drake dropped that five and a half minute long nuh uh called The Heart Part 6. But this song is, while referencing Drake, more an attack on the music industry as a whole, which you can kind of see in the name of the song. If you look at the song, it's called The Day the Party Died. It is a drop that dropped right after he announced that he's going to be playing at the Super Bowl, which I already know that <laughs> Drake is shivering in his timbers right now. Imagine knowing, if with five months in advance, that you're going to be called a pedophile in front of the biggest stage on the planet. Hundreds of millions of people, or hundred million probably, period. But regardless, let's talk about this song. Because I don't want to play the entire thing from start to finish because I don't want Universal Music Group to come to my house and skin me alive like some sort of Aztec tribe. But I do want to talk about some parts of the song that stuck out to me. Mainly parts that do reference Drake, as well as a bit of a call out towards content creators. He's attacking YouTubers now, I guess, kind of. But let's talk about it. Let's dig in. And just like a true chef, let's start with the presentation. How was this dropped? Well, it's not on YouTube, and it's not on Spotify. As of me recording this, I could be wrong in an hour or two because Kendrick is actively dropping things all the time. But all that I see of this so far is a drop on Instagram from his official account that is a five and a half minute long song that is just a picture of black Air Force Ones. And I tried to look up what this was and it links back to an image of Air Force Ones being sold on eBay. Here's the image, which by the way, are also put up for sale on 9-11. I don't know if this was Kendrick's doing or if he needed a picture of black Air Force Ones to match the energy of the song. But regardless, I think it's hilarious that he just grabbed whatever he could find that day right before dropping it. But I've left you guys peering over the edge long enough. Let's start the song with the first verse that opens like this. I think it's time to watch the party die. The shit that got too wicked to apologize. It's different, get him whacked and disqualified. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this sounds a lot like he's trying to kill Drake. I'm going to pray that that's not true, and maybe he's referring to just killing the music industry, but I'm just gonna pray that Kendrick isn't planning on any homicide, because I'd prefer to keep him out of prison so I can actually, you know, listen to songs that he drops and also watch him at the Super Bowl. That would be kind of funny too. Luckily, it seems like my fears are disproven because a few verses down, he drops this bar, which seems to be more of a focus on the whole music industry. Why argue with these clowns if the circus is well at work? Which this one also raises a few questions for me because it almost sounds like he feels like he wasted his time beefing with Drake when he could have spent his time beefing with the entirety of the music industry. Which Kendrick, if you've ever played a video game, you have to take out the mini bosses first. Calm down, buddy. You're not Captain America. Like, I get that the industry is corrupt and probably a whole ass mess behind the scenes but like i'll trust you i'll stand behind you i got your back buddy but at the same time please don't murder people that's illegal and also a crime however of course music doing its music thing a lot of these things are metaphors and so i wanted to dig into some of the early ones in the song because i actually really like the message in them specifically parts like how he says burn a whole village we start over it's really that time why reason with these gentlemen if they can't see the future first and as well as if you parade in gluttony without giving tr truth to the youth the graveyard is company just tell us what casket to choose talking about like yeah hey um I, I don't like how fake these people are, how much they focus on riches over the music and the art of the industry, because I feel like that is, if anything, something I very much agree with within the space of YouTube, too. I got into YouTube in the first place to just create funny videos that I like and what I would want to watch. And so, seeing a bunch of different various creators kind of focus on the money aspect has always been something that's really rubbed me the wrong way with content creation. I see all these different various trending tweets like, here's how I made $30,000 a month on YouTube. I don't give a shit. Show me how to be funny. <laughs> I don't know. But to continue through the song, he actually references Drake in another bar in a bit of a niche reference. They glorify scamming, you get chipped over this credit card. Which at first when I heard this, I immediately thought, oh yeah, scamming bad. Wow, who would have ever thought that? Thanks, Kendrick. But then I realized after Genius managed to put me upon this, that there are multiple times in the past in Drake songs where he talks about ways that he used credit card and mobile phone scams to make money. Drake, being a pedophile is one thing, but being an asshole? <laughs> That's stupid. But anyways, let's continue moving because I want to talk about the bar that references YouTubers now, or more specifically, just content creators. He drops this verse right here. Influencers talk down because I'm not with the basic shit, but they don't hate me. They hate the man that I represent. 
the type of man that never did ride because I want a favor. And what's funny is this is the first verse that I heard come from this song when I saw it posted on social media and people were referencing XQC. I didn't even know XQC knew who Kendrick or Drake was. I immediately thought they were talking about DJ Academics, who is a streamer who has been riding on dick. Drake. Fuck. Riding on Drake's d Sorry. <laughs> Freudian slip of the century right there. But DJ Academics is a streamer who is like Drake's hitman. He just goes out and streams every time a new song drops in the beef and he's like, nah, Drake can do this. Drake can handle it. Literally, when Kendrick dropped the announcement saying that he's going to be playing at the Super Bowl halftime show, DJ Academics dropped this tweet saying, nah, fuck that. Drake's got to squabble with Kendrick Lamar. Enough is enough. What do you mean he's got to squabble with Kendrick? Look what happened to him last time. And it's really funny. There was this one clip I found on Twitter where Academics sort of realizes that like, oh shit, Drake doesn't give a shit about me, and I've been riding on him since day one, and and he's been waiting for a favor back from Drake. He thinks that him and Drake are friends. Parasocial relationship of the millennia. Meanwhile, I'm just here to ride Kendrick for the love of the game. But regardless, there's this clip, and I tried to play it for you guys, but literally, he is almost inaudible throughout the entire clip. Like, listen, just listen to this. Act, that nigga be dropping ass music, but you won't say that because you're a number one fan, my nigga. So you be like, yo, even if this shit ass, you might get off line. Might tell niggas you know, yo, that shit was ass. But nigga, you get on, nigga, you fucking jump into it, doing backflips, nigga, all type of shit. That nigga can't give you no tickets to his show? Act, the first nigga he should be hitting up when he's tapping the city is you. Poor guy. <laughs> this poor guy. He is being used by Drake. Drake hasn't responded to him once, and he seems like he thinks Drake's his buddy. That is so sad. And of course, you know. As Kendrick said, the type of man that never did ride because I want a favor. I feel bad for academics, I'm not gonna lie. Because it, honestly, it shows more on Drake's character than it does DJ. Because DJ, he's loving a celebrity he, the same way I do. And, and he just has a bigger platform, so he has a higher possibility of meeting Drake. But the fact that he never does proves that Drake is only gonna go for content creators that are gonna amplify his own brand. Like Aiden Ross, he streamed Fortnite with Ninja. But really, if it isn't someone who's going to benefit Drake, he's not going to do anything about it. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll prove me wrong and be a good person, but... You know. <laughs> and as the song continues, Kendrick really pushes that whole idea of murdering everyone. There is another verse that goes on where he says, I think it's time to watch the party die. Street gentlemen and their corporate guys. The rappers that report the lies. They need the families mortified. We can do life without them. They bodies organized. Tell me if you obliged. Go ahead, let me know. Should I kill everyone? Comment down below. Please don't. That was YouTube. I was quoting Ken. Please. Wait. Modest. Oh, there. Oh, oh, man. There's a few other bars throughout the song where Kendrick refers to Drake as just the guy who flexes money and doesn't do anything of value. Flashy nickel with nasty decisions using money as a backbone. I want his head cracked before he's back home. Which I don't know if uh, I, I, if I didn't know better. It sounds like you want to kill that guy, Kendrick. He didn't chill with the metaphors? The center, like, meat of the song, the meat and potatoes, as the Irish would say, or not, because they don't have any certified potato famine reference. Comment down below if you're famished. But as I was saying, the real girth of the song focuses on just, like, people who abuse their wealth in the music industry, as well as content creators yet again, except this time he tells them to die. The radio personality pushing propaganda for salary. Let me know when they turn up as a casualty. I want agony, assault, and battery. Kendrick, all they did was talk bad about you on Twitch.com. I don't think you need to murder them with this stuff. Get it? It's assault. There literally is like a singular assault in here and a battery. Get it? Get the joke? It's a joke. <laughs> But as we start to get to the latter half of the song, Kendrick has a bar that I feel like not enough people are talking about, where he says, Sometimes I wonder what Lecrae would do. Fuck these niggas up or show them just what prayer do. I want to be empathetic, my heart like D1, but I will... And no, that silent part wasn't you having a stroke. That toast you smell is actually just Kendrick cooking because it's him being like, do I want to be empathetic towards these people who are bad and ruining the industry or do I want to just go full ham and John Wick these motherfuckers? And he brings up Lecrae and D1, which are two of the biggest names in apparently Christian hip-hop. I didn't know that because I'm not exactly big in church music, but regardless, they're apparently friends of Kendrick with Lecrae even talking about the Drake versus Kendrick beef earlier this year. Did you think, uh... Drake stood any chance against Kendrick Lamar? No. 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 Not a small chance. No. Nah. Oh, he was crazy. Drake is a great rapper, but Kendrick's from the culture. <sighs> I, I mean, this is my opinion. Hot take. Drake is a phenomenal rapper. And uh, Ghost Riders aside, he's a great rapper. I know he can really rap, but Drake is a fan of the culture. Mm. Kendrick is a product of the culture. It's a difference. And Lecrae, you might as well be a pastor because I'm down on my knees for this sermon. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus. But Lecrae did nail the hit nail right right on the nail. Fuck you. He perfectly encapsulated why I believe the culture sides with Kendrick. And that's honestly why I have always been a big fan of Kendrick as well. It's, it, when I listen to his music, I see him through the lyrics that he says. I, I see his story. And even if it isn't his story, a story that he's trying to tell feels genuine and feels real. Meanwhile, when you listen to Drake, it feels like I'm listening to Taylor Swift, but rapping. Because at both of their cores, they're both talented artists. They're not famous for no reason. It's just that they're famous for different reasons. Drake makes music that a lot of people can consume very easily, while Kendrick likes to tell a story. And so, when they go at each other at who's more real, you're fighting a ma like a mannequin. It's a mannequin versus a flamethrower. There's not much to fight there. And speaking of spitting flames, we're going to continue down the song. We're moving almost to the end here, but I wanted to fit in just one or two more lyrics that really stood out to me, starting with They wonder why I'm not enthused to drop. The more visible you get, the more your spiritual is tried. And I found this one interesting because when I first listened to it, I thought it was a shadow diss at Drake again because Drake is notorious for having a lot of songs. Like, he has a lot of songs out. But then I decided to look up how many songs Drake versus Kendrick have out, and I see Genius talks about how Drake has 1,638 songs. Holy shit! But then, I looked up Kendrick, and he has 1,369. So, I- maybe not. I think this might just literally be a reference towards, um, selling your soul in the industry, which would make more sense, and par for the course for the song. And the song wraps up with a bit of a religious reference, talking about- It's in the cold to say, I know these artists petrified, the end was so in jail by Jezebel, the drug the full of lies. And I won't lie to you guys, I just included that part of the song because it made my ears feel good. But if you want a bit of a description, the Jezebel that he references in that bar is apparently the Queen of Israel, often quoted as a symbol of false idols and promiscuity. I ripped that straight out of Genius's website. But I would say it's pretty fitting. It sounds like she is just the physical incarnation of what the industry is right now, so it would make sense considering that's kind of who Kendrick is attacking. But I believe my favorite part of the song is just the last bar where he says, the kids live tomorrow because today the party just died. And that seems to be his focus with multiple different instances in the song where he mentions just like the children are in danger because of the culture that's being pushed to them from the industry in the modern day, which makes sense. I, I mean, it kind of glorifies a lot of things that get a lot of people killed. So it kind of emphasizes the whole idea that Kendrick is criticizing in the industry because it's pushing all of these very harmful ideologies onto people who you can still take their head and press like this and it'll go straight through the skull. They have a little soft spot right there. I still have a soft spot too, to be fair, but still. That about wraps up the song. I really liked it. I thought it was a really pretty song. It sounds nice. It has a similar vibe to Meet the Grams where it's slow, melodical, but also has a deeper meaning in it. Kind of like most of Kendrick's songs, which is why I love the guy so much. Have you been able to pick up that yet? Have you been able to pick up the fact that I like Kendrick? Do you, have, you been able to, have you been able to catch a trend yet? I'm just curious if this is going to be on his Super Bowl halftime show set because it would be kind of crazy if this is how he brings it up. Just his hate for the industry amplified to 100 million people. That would be cool. But for now, I'm just going to hit the road. I appreciate you guys being here. Like the video if you liked it. This was a longer one, but subscribe if you're new because I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you in whatever I make next. And as always, adios, arrivederci, goodbye, good night. And I need to go on a walk because my butthole's sore from bouncing on it.